determine all possible primes, P and Q, such that, P cubed, minus Q to the power of 5, equals P plus Q all squared. Because P and Q are prime numbers. So P and Q are greater than or equal to 2. If P is less than or equal to Q, then the left hand side of equation 1, is less than or equal to 0. While the right hand side of equation 1, is greater than 0. So P must be greater than Q, which is greater than or equal to 2. Next we will divide the problem into different cases. Case 1, if Q equals 2. Then equation 1 becomes, P cubed, minus 2 to the power of 5, equals P plus 2 all squared. P plus 2 all squared, equals P squared, plus 4P, plus 4. Rearrange and simplify the equation, we have, P cubed, minus P squared, minus 4P, minus 36, equals 0. This is a cubic equation. We can prove that, it has no prime solutions. When P equals 3, the left hand side of this equation, equals 27, minus 9, minus 12, minus 36. Clearly it is less than 0. So P cannot equal 3. That is, if this equation has prime solutions, P must be greater than or equal to 5. We let, F of P, equal P cubed, minus P squared, minus 4P, minus 36. Then F dash of P, equals 3P squared, minus 2P, minus 4. Which is greater than 0, when P is greater than or equal to 5. So F of P, is greater than F of 5 when P is greater than or equal to 5. F of 5, equals 5 cubed, minus 5 squared, minus 4 times 5, minus 36. Which is greater than 0. So when P is greater than or equal to 5, the left hand side of this equation, is always greater than 0. Therefore, this equation has no prime solutions, when Q equals 2. Case 2, if Q equals 3. Then equation 1 becomes, P cubed, minus 3 to the power of 5, equals P plus 3 all squared. P plus 3 all squared, equals P squared, plus 6P, plus 9. Rearrange and simplify the equation, we have, P cubed, minus P squared, minus 6P, minus 252, equals 0. This is a cubic equation. We will solve it by using the factorization method. Negative p squared, can be written as, negative 7p squared, plus 6p squared. p cubed, minus 7p squared, can be written as, p squared times p minus 7. 6p squared, minus 6p, minus 252, can be written as, 6 times, p squared, minus p, minus 42. P squared, minus P, minus 42, can be written as, P minus 7, times P plus 6. Now the two terms on the left hand side of the equation, have a common factor P minus 7. So they can be factorized and written as, P minus 7, times P squared, plus 6P, plus 36. Because P squared, plus 6P, plus 36, is always greater than 0. So P must equal 7. When P equals 7, and Q equals 3, P cubed, minus Q to the power of 5, equals 7 cubed, minus 3 to the power of 5, which is equal to, 343, minus 243, which is 100. P plus Q all squared, equals 7 plus 3 all squared, which is also 100. So P Q equals 7 3, is a solution. Case 3, if Q is greater than 3, then of course P must be greater than 3. As both P and Q are primes, so we let, P equal 3M plus A, Q equal 3N plus B. Where, M and N, are positive integers. And A and B, are either 1 or 2. Then P cubed, minus Q to the power of 5, is equal to, 3M plus A all cubed minus 3n plus b all to the power of 5. We know that, u plus v all cubed, is equal to, u cubed, plus 3u squared v, 
plus 3 uv squared, plus v cubed. And that, u plus v all to the power of 5, is equal to, u to the power of 5, plus 5 u to the power of 4 v, plus 10 u cubed v squared, plus 10 u squared v cubed, plus 5 u v to the power of 4, plus v to the power of 5. By applying these, we can expand, 3m plus a all cubed, and 3n plus b all to the power of 5. Note that, after expansions, all terms including 3, except a cubed, and b to the power of 5. We let, x be some integer, resulting from the binomial expansions, excluding a cubed, minus b to the power of 5. Then we can write, equals x, plus a cubed, minus b to the power of 5. Clearly, 3 divides x. p plus q all squared, is equal to, 3m plus a, plus 3n plus b all squared. Which can be written as, 3 times m plus n, plus a plus b all squared. We know that, u plus v all squared, is equal to, u squared, plus 2 uv, plus v squared. By applying this, we can expand, 3 times m plus n, plus a plus b all squared. Note that, after expansions, all terms including 3, except a plus b all squared. We let, y be some integer, resulting from the perfect square expansion, excluding a plus b all squared. Then we can write, equals y, plus a plus b all squared. Clearly, 3 divides y. Now we concentrate on, a cubed, minus b to the power of 5, and a plus b all squared. If a equals b, there are two possibilities, a equals b, equals 1. Or, a equals b, equals 2. Then, a cubed, minus b to the power of 5, equals 0, when both a and b, equal 1. Or negative 24, when both a and b, equal 2. As 3 divides 0, and 3 divides negative 24. So 3 divides a cubed, minus b to the power of 5. We already knew that, 3 divides x. So 3 divides p cubed, minus q to the power of 5. a plus b all squared, equals 4, when both a and b, equal 1. Or 16, when both a and b, equal 2. As 3 does not divide 4, and 3 does not divide 16. So 3 does not divide a plus b all squared. This implies that, 3 does not divide p plus q all squared. From 2 and 3, we know that, the equation has no solutions, when a equals b. If a does not equal b, there are two possibilities, a equals 1, and b equals 2, or, a equals 2, and b equals 1. Then a cubed, minus b to the power of 5, equals negative 31, when a equals 1, and b equals 2. Or 7, when a equals 2, and b equals 1. As 3 does not divide negative 31, and 3 does not divide 7. So 3 does not divide a cubed, minus b to the power of 5. This implies that, 3 does not divide p cubed, minus q to the power of 5. a plus b all squared, equals 3 squared, as a plus b equals 3. As 3 divides 3 squared. So 3 divides a plus b all squared. This implies that, 3 divides p plus q all squared. From 4 and 5, we know that, the equation has no solutions, when a does not equal b. So we have proved that, the equation has no solutions, when q is greater than 3. That is, pq equals 7 3, is the only solution.